The King's Avatar Chapter 11, Missing a Person? Add me. Chapter 11, Missing a Person? Add me. Yeshu actually laughed and asked, What's up? This dull and casual tone made Sleeping Moon speechless. He was almost convinced that this wasn't the person that he had raged at for half a day. Although the masses believed that he had been cheated, he and Lord Grimm were both well aware that this was a false accusation. But how could this guy act like nothing had happened? Did he not see the previous messages? The shameless novice Lord Grimm, in order to steal the hidden boss for himself, didn't heal the party members on purpose and let them die. Everyone be careful. Sleeping Moon immediately sent out the stored message twice and looked forward to Ye Xu's reaction. But in the end, Ye Xu said, You're still doing it? You're not going to level up? I, I want you to know my might. Do you now know that my full moon guild isn't to be messed with? Sleeping Moon had prepared these words for a while now. But now that he said them, he felt that the context was completely off. It was as if his words were like a knife stabbing through cotton, not impressive at all. I know, I can't find anyone to party with anymore, Yishu said. Hearing this, Sleeping Moon felt a little more at ease and laughed out loud, let's see you offend me again. He didn't think that Yishu said, aren't you missing a person? Why not add me? Sleeping Moon was immediately dumbstruck. Damn, how low are you? Haha, add me, add me. Now that we know each other more, why don't we work together? Yeshu unexpectedly took the initiative and sent him a request. Sleeping Moon did indeed have a four-player party, and it obviously wasn't the previous team. The other three players were all members of Full Moon Guild. Establishing a guild could only be done after leaving the beginner village, so these were all members from old servers that transferred over to the new 10th server. And in the end, they were all put into the same beginner village. Before, when Sleeping Moon wanted the hidden boss to himself, it was obviously inconvenient to do it with his own guild members, so he went and found four other random players. Unfortunately, he bumped into Yeshu, who helped and then betrayed him. Right after, he immediately asked the guild for help and also conveniently got the former members to help slander Yeshu. He wanted to defame Lord Grimm right then and there. But the result? The result was this. The guy didn't seem to care at all. With no one wanting him, he bluntly requested to join his party. Looking at his request, Sleeping Moon didn't know whether to accept or decline it. Sleeping Moon was at a loss. Learning from his mistake, he felt that this person wasn't a simple character. What was his goal? As he hesitated, a brother on the side privately messaged him. Add him. This guy's asking for death. Once we enter the dungeon, what can he do? Sleeping Moon thought about it. He had four allies on his side. There was absolutely no reason to be afraid of him. Thus, Yeshu entered the green forest with these four people. This time their luck wasn't too good and they didn't encounter the midnight phantom cat. Yeshu laughed and asked, Do you still need me to heal? No need. Everyone will attack together. As Sleeping Moon said this, the four had already rushed up to attack the monsters. These four clearly weren't newbies. Their skills were very veteran-like, and with this skill level, two or three people were enough to easily clear the Green Forest dungeon. Adding in another person, their efficiency flew through the roof. Yeshu also didn't speak much. He swung his Thousand Chance umbrella into a lance and attacked. Sky Strike, Dragon Tooth, these two were attack skills. Of course, besides these skills, the character also had normal attacks. Players, through the direction and strength of normal attacks, controlled many kinds of attack patterns, such as straight stabs, horizontal slashes, vertical chops, uppercut, etc. When these sort of attacks were full, lie utilized, they were sometimes extremely similar to skills, except their effects were different. For example, Sky Strike was a type of uppercut attack, but the knock-up effects and damage were much stronger than a normal uppercut. Dragon Tooth was a type of straight stab. Its stabbing speed was much quicker and could also cause the opponent to be stunned for a small duration. When a character was stunned, he would not be able to put out any actions. Yeshu didn't need to use these skills. His normal attacks were already enough to kill those green forest monsters with ease. It was just that when he withdrew his lance in an area with no monsters, a monster would suddenly be pushed onto him by the others. Yeshu laughed and accepted it. 
He knew that it was Sleeping Moon and his other helpers deliberately pushing these small monsters onto him. They wanted to put him into a situation where he was surrounded on all sides. But surrounded was surrounded. How could Yeshu not be able to deal with it? He had been surrounded by five green forest monsters more than once. Sending a sky strike onto a monster, he broke out of the encirclement. With a horizontal sweep, his right hand chopped and slashed, and the five little monsters lined up to die. The other four just watched and looked on without lifting a finger to help. But in the end, they saw how Lord Grimm dispatched the monsters at lightning speed. His might was tyrannical. Seeing this, the four were even somewhat jealous. This guy's skill is really good. A party member called Seven Fields nodded his head expressing his approval. He's a veteran. Looking at his skill, he could easily solo the Green Forest Dungeon. Another person said, he knows his stuff. He soloed off the Berserk Midnight Phantom Cat. I wouldn't have thought that his skill level was above mine. Sleeping Moon said, with this skill, there's no way he would die in Green Forest. A person concluded, how about we go to Spider Cave when we hit level 10? Seven Fields said to the other three, Spider Cave was a level 10 to 15 dungeon. It was much harder than Green Forest. If Green Forest's purpose was to give players time to get used to the game, then once they hit level 10 from Spider Cave onwards, players needed to start using actual strategy and skill to clear it. It was called Spider Cave because the monsters were spiders. There were two types. One type was long-ranged and spit out webs that had a chance to bind. Players that were bound wouldn't be able to move. The other type was melee-ranged and its bite had a chance to poison. Players that were poisoned would continuously lose health. In Green Forest, only the hidden boss had these sort of status-inducing attacks. Besides normal monsters, Spider Cave had three bosses, a long-ranged one, a melee-ranged one, and a Spider Lord as the final boss. The hidden bosses were Spider Elite, Spider Warrior, and a Spider Emperor. Because levels 1 to 10 went by quickly, there were still many that hadn't gotten used to the game yet. When they opened up the Spider Dungeon, they wouldn't come out alive. Thus, the beginner guides never recommended it. The only ones that would consider this dungeon were people like Sleeping Moon because they already possessed some level of skill as veterans. If we kill this guy in the Spider Cave, we'll only have four people. Will we still be able to clear it? Sleeping Moon hesitated. As long as we don't meet the hidden boss, it shouldn't be a problem. Sevenfield said. If we meet a hidden boss, even he won't be able to beat it. The Spider Cave is a lot harder than here. A person said. True, then let's first hurry and level up. When we get to level 10, let's head to Spider Cave. Sleeping Moon said. Suddenly, a member that hadn't spoken the entire time said, then we're going to bring him to level up, and then kill him? Sleeping Moon heard this and was startled. Hearing this, his plan was indeed stupid. But Seven Fields already found an explanation. It'd be better to say, we'll first let him do all the hard work, and then kick him out. Right, 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 it'll be like this. Sleeping Moon felt relieved. The King's Avatar Chapter 12, Spider Cave Chapter 12, Spider Cave 1 The four guys were very aggressive. They sneakily discussed on one side and let Ye Shu do all of the hard work. It was good that they hadn't completely seen Ye Shu as an idiot. After arguing, the four went up and helped Ye Shu clear monsters. While they cleared, they slowly explained, Just a moment ago, our guild had some business to take care of. We were a little out of focus. We're good now. Come on, guys. Ye Shu dully said a few words as if he wasn't suspicious at all. The four were secretly delighted. If they cooperated together, the four veterans and the expert Ye Shu, they would easily cruise by this dungeon. Every person killed happily. Their outer appearance didn't show any signs of an ulterior motive. Have you noticed that this guy's damage is very high? Seven Fields and Sleeping Moon muttered quietly. It looks like it. I've never seen that lance-like weapon before. Sleeping Moon said. I don't know either. I don't pay attention to low-level lances. Seven Fields said. It'd be good if it dropped when we kill this guy. Sleeping Moon said. So what if it dropped? No matter how high of an attack it has, it's still a low-level weapon. We won't be able to use it for long. Seven Fields said. True. Sleeping Moon nodded. Each side did not provoke the other and cooperated harmoniously. 
Going in and out of green forest, their efficiency was extremely high. It was unfortunate, however, that they didn't meet the hidden boss Midnight Phantom Cat again. After clearing it a few times, Lord Grimm was the, the first to reach level 10. The first hidden boss kill gave him an ample amount of experience. Green Forest only had one hidden boss so far. Just relying on this, Lord Grimm was already pretty far up on the 10th server level leaderboards. Only the first to reach level 10 was not him. That player was called Blue River. This was already his second time to be announced by the system. The first time was when he and four others were the first to clear Green Forest. Seeing that Lord Grimm was the first among them to reach level 10, Sleeping Moon felt a fit of nervousness. They were afraid that this guy would just leave them. Who knew that Lord Grimm only laughed and said, I've leveled up. After a few sounds of congratulations, he entered the Green Forest with the other four again. The experience gap between them wasn't too great. After clearing this dungeon, Sleeping Moon and the others all reached level 10. The five of them also obtained quite a few equipment. Brother, we work quite well together. Now that we've all hit level 10, why don't we go and tackle Spider Cave together? Seven Fields went up and asked Yeshu. Sleeping Moon and Yeshu once had a disagreement. Now this sudden change of heart made him feel a little odd. In addition, Sleeping Moon still continued to look at Yeshu maliciously and just let Seven Fields play the role of a mediator. Yeshu heard this and agreed. Only he first said that he would go and learn skills first. For skill points, it didn't matter whether they were given as quest rewards, leveling, killing a certain amount of monsters, or dueling, these would all only allow him to reach the 4,000 skill points. From level 7 to level 10, he didn't have many skill points accumulated. But the most important part was that level 10 was another period when new skills could be learned. The other four were obviously going to learn too. Thus, each of them looked for a teacher to learn from. Afterwards, they grouped up at Spider Cave. There weren't many people at the entrance of Spider Cave. After all, they had leveled up relatively fast compared to ordinary players, and newbies wouldn't consider going to this dungeon. Outside, there were only only a few randomly made parties. Because the dungeon was difficult, they would all ask about each other's equipments. Forming a party wasn't so carefree. Yeshu and the others were straightforward. Without saying a word, they directly entered. Only this time, Sleeping Moon and the other three helpers began to act evilly. Should we immediately kill him or look at the situation first? One person asked quietly. Why don't we look first? If this person truly an expert, let's use him first. Why don't we plan again when the boss comes? Seven Fields suggested. Okay. The other members had no other opinions. Truthfully, those members had no enmity with Yeshu. The person in front of them was so outstanding. He was also the one with the most DPS in the group. They were a little unwilling to part with him. But to give their friend Sleeping Moon some face, in the end, they still went forward with the plan. Although no one said anything, they were all quite regretful. You all brought antidotes? Seven Fields asked everyone, which everyone replied with a yes. Only Yeshu actually laughed. No need. This guy's looking for death. Sleeping Moon didn't feel too good about Yeshu's confidence. Then let's go. Seven Fields said happily. The inside of Spider Cave was gloomy and spider webs could be seen everywhere. From time to time, scattered skeletons could be seen. It looked sinister and terrible. Sleeping Moon and the others all looked a bit nervous. When a character died in glory, they would lose experience. In the normal world, it was a 10% decrease, and equipment also had a chance of dropping, though the chances were fairly low. But when the A player reached the heavenly domain, dying became scary. The player would lose 20% of their experience, and equipment had a high chance of dropping. Looking at Lord Grimm again, he walked in large strides with his battle lance, as if it were the same as Green Forest. Sleeping Moon and the others saw that this guy took the initiative to detect the mines. It was a good thing for them anyways. Towards these low-level dungeons, Yeshu had pretty much forgotten what was in them. He remembered that he had once done a guide for Spider Cave, but he couldn't recall it at all. It had already been almost ten years. Just when Yeshu was sighing, 
a shadow suddenly leaped out from a crack in a rock directly towards Lord Grimm. Yeshu's left hand tapped the keyboard, and his right hand dragged the mouse. Lord Grimm rolled backwards to dodge it and launched Sky Strike. A melee ranged green spider pounced onto him, but was hit by Sky Strike in midair. Adding attacks while the opponent was knocked up was a fundamental skill in glory. How could Ye Shu miss this opportunity? After an intense burst of keyboard typing and mouse clicking, Lord Grimm leaped up brandishing his lance. From up in the air to down on the ground, he slashed madly at the green spider. Poo poo poo, -poo four strikes landed in quick succession. The green spider was hit aside onto a rock. Fuck, no way, Seven Field said with great alarm. He comboed it four times in mid-air. Another person also cried out in fear. He can combo four times at level 10? The third person, Sleeping Moon could only open his mouth in shock, speechless. A four-hit combo in mid-air, this was a widely known battle mage combo that few players could execute. It was simple in theory. It was just a normal straight stab, dragon tooth, and then two hits from the level 10 battle mage skill double stab to complete it. I heard only players with an APM of 170 or higher can execute this sort of combo, Seven Field said. Can't that only be done by a professional battle mage after his speed has been buffed? Another person reminded. He's still only an unspecialized character. How big is the difference in speed between an unspecialized character and a battle mage? I don't know, you'd still have to consider equipment, but it doesn't look like any of his equipment increases speed. Lord Grimm was pretty much the same as theirs. What about weapon? Could it be his weapon? Let's not worry about the reason. Even if you were a battle mage and wore a set of speed increasing flowing light equipment, could you guys combo it four times in midair? Silence. If they could do it, they wouldn't be so astonished. Just who is this Purr, son? The three members looked toward Sleeping Moon. The King's Avatar Chapter 13, Spider Cave 2. Chapter 13, Spider Cave 2. I say we shouldn't offend this guy. Seven Fields said in a serious tone towards the other three, but his gaze faced Sleeping Moon. Right, to have a 170 and up APM, he must be a great expert, another one agreed. 170 is only a conservative estimate. He's an unspecialized character without any equipment yet, he can still combo four times in midair. I feel like his APM would probably be above 200, right? 200 APM. In our guild, I'm afraid only our guild leader has this level of skill, no? Not only should we not offend him, we should try to rope him in. This type of expert probably has a special background. They discussed this issue one by one, and only Sleeping Moon didn't say anything. He understood their reasoning very clearly. Actually, after all of these dungeons, Sleeping Moon's hate for Yeshu had already weakened. If he could successfully cause this guy to die, then he would be satisfied. But now that he knew that this person was a great expert and that going against him wasn't easy, his hate once again arose. He himself couldn't explain this feeling clearly. He was envious, jealous, etc. He had them all. Right when he was going to say something, he saw that his three brothers were all watching Lord Grimm in awe, their mouths repeatedly gasping in surprise. Sleeping Moon also turned around to look and found that this guy's incredible skill really did exist. The monsters in Green Forest were too weak. With Lord Grimm's high damage, he killed monsters too quickly for him to judge properly. Although the boss had more health, all of them ganged up to attack it, so it wasn't clear either. Now that he was attacking these high HP spiders, his skill level could be seen clearly now. His combo has already reached 17. It hasn't been broken ever since he made that four-hit combo. It looks like he's using the wall to rebound it and then using a normal uppercut. I really didn't think he would have been able to connect that sky strike. Too beautiful. The three people all repeatedly gasped in amazement, making Sleeping Moon feel extremely disgusted. Right when he was about to say something, Seven Fields had already turned around towards him. Hear me out. Let's not make things difficult for this guy. It's okay for you to be on bad terms with him, but let the rest of us negotiate with him. Sleeping Moon nodded his head in silence. He was a little bitter, but he knew that Seven Fields and the others were already preparing to rope this player in. What guild wouldn't want such a highly skilled player? By comparison, 
he himself was only a normal member of Full Moon Guild. No one would make things difficult for this type of expert just for his sake. How beautiful! That green spider had been killed by Lord Grimm in the span of a single breath. Seven fields and the others all immediately circled up and gasped in admiration. They didn't need to fake this because this player's skill was indeed incredible. Brother, I now see that your skills are truly out of the ordinary, Sevenfield said. It's nothing much. That player was still so humble towards this type of admiration. It seemed as if the player that Sleeping Moon had told them to frame was a completely different person. Brother, in the other servers, what guild sent you here to this new server? Sevenfields asked. But he felt that the likelihood was low. What guild would send him here alone? This person was most likely by himself. None. I'm by myself, as expected. Really? You actually aren't part of a guild? Brother, this level of skill can't be found so easily. How could any guild not want you? Seven Fields pretended to be astonished. There are no guilds in this server yet. Yeshu said. Seven Fields stared blankly. This server didn't have any guilds yet, but what about old servers? It wasn't possible for this type of expert to have just started playing glory. Although the player wouldn't say, Seven Fields reckoned that he probably had a disagreement with his former guild, which is why he sulkily ran to a new server to play. This was an opportunity. It was the perfect time to make this player feel that their full moon guild was a warm environment. Brother, what server were you a part of before? Seven Fields began questioning. I haven't played in a while. An irrelevant answer. He had dodged the first question. Oh, oh. Seven Fields could only say, oh. How could he break the ice? Seven Fields was stuck at a wall. In the end, it was clear that he wasn't interested in chatting and continued to advance. But this time, Seven Fields and the others all surrounded him inseparably close, as if he had already become the core member of their party. Sleeping Moon felt awkward, but he could only stay silent. With this expert overseeing them, they advanced smoothly through the dungeon. The four members that brought an antidote, sure enough, didn't need to use it because Lord Grimm aggroed all of the spiders onto his body and dodged by using running, rolling, and jumping type skills. The four would sometimes even lose themselves to Lord Grimm's beautiful movements and forget to attack the monsters. If I remember correctly, there should be a bunch of spiders up ahead. After killing them, the first boss will appear, but we won't know whether it's poisonous or web shooting. It's one of the difficult parts of this dungeon. Let's... Seven Fields at this moment saw that Lord Grimm had already rushed up and began killing. He could only helplessly correct himself. Okay, then let's go. Seven Fields' memory was correct. This part of the cave did indeed have a lot of spiders. There were a total of 70, 30 poisonous and 40 web shooting. They were all linked too, so right when they closed in, all 70 of them neatly rushed out. Hurry up! Seven Fields called out to his three brothers. He wouldn't dare command Lord Grimm. He didn't know how far apart their levels were. Only, this time, there were 70 spiders. No matter how good Lord Grimm was, there was no way he would be able to aggro all of them. After all, he was only level 10. He didn't have any crowd control skills yet, so he called out everyone to go forward and relieve some of Lord Grimm's pressure. In the end, with a hua, Lord Grimm shook the battle lance in his hands and a half circle slashed out. Four spiders were split open in an instant. Two spiders rushed up and two spiders spit out webs. Lord Grimm leaped backwards avoiding the spider webs. At the same time, he spun in midair and with another shake of the battle lance, poo poo two spiders behind him were hit. After landing, he flipped sideways and avoided another spider web. He got up and executed a sky strike. The seventh spider was knocked up into the sky. It couldn't even spit out its web. The four others all immediately went into disarray. Is he still even a person? The four people all wanted to say this, but Glory, that wretched voice system, would let him hear it. That wouldn't be good. But besides saying that, there were no other words to describe how they currently felt. A 180-degree horizontal sweep, my God! Everyone held their breath and could only type it out. To be able to spin his body after a short hop backwards and then strike accurately two times. And that perfect sky strike right after the roll. That's not human. 
everyone firmly believed. Although all of these were the combination of basic skills, not everyone could do them. For example, the 180-degree horizontal sweep was just a normal attack, but the sweeping angle depended on mouse control. The faster the mouse movement, the larger the angle. It also had to do with the character's attack speed. At level 10, a 180-degree horizontal sweep wasn't something that could be done by any ordinary person. The King's Avatar, Chapter 14, Spider Cave, 3. Chapter 14, Spider Cave. Everyone bowed down and worshipped him. Even Sleeping Moon couldn't help but admit it. This person forcibly used skills in a way that couldn't be done by a level 10. It was ridiculous. Brother, the way you use these battle mage skills is too tyrannical. Seven Fields truly meant it. If he didn't say this, he would have received internal injuries from holding his breath for too long. Ha ha, it's not bad. Lord Grimm had been surrounded by seven monsters, stabbing, cutting, slashing, chopping as if were handling a butcher's cleaver with ease. The others felt embarrassed to be there just watching him. They were all veterans and could all control aggro well. They wouldn't mess up Lord Grimm's control over the seven spiders. What they had originally thought was too difficult, in the end was easily resolved, but all four of them understood that to set up this abnormal situation, if he wasn't there, then it wouldn't have been possible. Right after the seven spiders were killed, they heard a strange shriek. The first small boss had brilliantly arrived. Everyone hadn't yet seen the spider yet, when they first heard the shriek and then a cloud of dense purple mists spurted out. It's a poisonous spider, Seven Fields yelled. But this cloud of purple mist came out too suddenly. The range was extremely large. Two members weren't able to dodge it in time and immediately pulled out to antidotes to use. After using them, they turned greatly alarmed. Their life was still declining. Why isn't it working? The two alarmed. The grade of the antidote is too low, Yeshu said. Fuck! The two players cursed. They hadn't come to this dungeon when they were low-leveled. After reaching high levels and returning, this dungeon wouldn't have such a problem. At that moment, they were still underleveled compared to the monsters. How could they have thought to detoxify the poison? They had carefully prepared two antidotes, but in the end, they couldn't use it when the boss came. Hadn't they been cheated? Lord Grimm swung his arms and casted heels onto each of them. Afterwards, he rushed up to the boss number one. At the same time, he began directing the two non-poisoned players, Seven Fields and Sleeping Moon, and pointed his lance backwards, yelling, Seven Fields stand at one o'clock. Little Moon Moon, go stand at four o'clock. Little Moon Moon. Sleeping Moon almost coughed up blood, but this wasn't the time to argue. Seven Fields, without questioning him, ran towards the one o'clock position. Sleeping Moon also ran to his position without delay. Boss number one's poison mist had already rushed out. This guy was big and beefy and was at least thrice as big as normal spiders. This type of massive freak was much easier to hit than the small midnight phantom cat. But large monsters had a different advantage. Due to their relatively heavy weight, knock-up or other displacement skills had a reduced effect. How much it was reduced by depended on its weight and the attacker's strength. This boss number one in front of them could be considered a huge monster. When Lord Grimm stabbed forward, it didn't even tremble. It was clear that this sort of normal attack would not knock it up at all. The experienced Ye Xu was not surprised by this. His fingers flickered and Lord Grimm did another four-hit combo. The big spider screeched. It raised its head and spit out a thick fog but Lord Grimm had already turned around swiftly and slipped away. Although this boss's body was big, its actions weren't slower than a normal spider. Its jumping power was also remarkable. It jumped as if it were Mount Tai wanting to crush Lord Grimm. He flipped over and rolled away. The one called Little Moon Moon silently said, Hello? Do you want us to stand here so you can fight by yourself? Then you two, one of you move to seven o'clock and the other to nine o'clock. Yeshu yelled, how much of a gap between us? The two people ran while asking. A two-meter radius, Yeshu said. After falling into position, the four people had already formed a circle. They looked at each and had no idea what they were doing. Seeing that he was still soloing the boss, was he just arranging seats for them to watch him play the game? Lord Grimm dodged left and right, finally bringing the boss running towards them.
the four people immediately prepared for battle. The boss suddenly jumped high up into the air, and it looked like it was going to squash Sleeping Moon. Sleeping Moon wanted to dodge, but heard Yeshu shout, Don't move! Revenge! This guy seized the opportunity to take revenge. Sleeping Moon felt that his mind was a sheet of dazzling light. Without thinking, he ignored Yeshu's words and rolled away. But when he turned around and looked, Lord Grimm had already used a Sky Strike on the spider boss's stomach. Sky Strike, a specialized class's knock-up skill, was obviously going to have a greater effect than a normal uppercut. After the falling spider received this, it turned sluggish in midair and had already shifted direction. Although the Sky Strike didn't have much of an effect, the monster had already been in midair. When it changed direction, it fell nicely in the center of the four people. Seven fields front kick it. Nine o'clock lunge. Seven o'clock repel. Little moon moon, hurry up and return to your position. Yeshu and the four players had been together for a long time. He had already seen all of their skills. Now that they had surrounded it, Yeshu even directed what skills they should use. Seven fields rushed up and front kicked it. This was a striker skill and had a small knockback effect. Although the effect was reduced on the big spider boss, it would still push back the boss a little. The player at 9 o'clock also jumped up to execute a lunge. This blade master skill also had a knockback effect like seven fields front kick. The kicked back boss was hit again. At this point, these experienced players already understood Yeshu's intent. The 7 o'clock player welcomed it and used repel. This was a night skill. From the name, the effect of this skill was the most outstanding one among them. But the boss was pushed into the four o'clock position where no one was there. This was originally Sleeping Moon's position, but because he thought Yeshu wanted to kill him, he dodged to the side. Even though he was already running back to his position, it was already a little too late. Everyone already understood that Yeshu wanted them to play billiards with the boss as the ball. This reasoning could only have only been made through the strong points of each of the four players. What were their strong points? Familiarity. The four players were all veterans that came together as friends. They had some mutual understanding between them, so they could do this sort of formation. Only now this easy situation had been destroyed by Sleeping Moon. Even Seven Fields and the others were a little unhappy. At this crucial moment, when the boss was about to leave the encirclement, Lord Grimm suddenly appeared at the four o'clock position. Everyone was startled. Lord Grimm had been standing at the eleven o'clock position. They hadn't seen him move, how could he have suddenly moved to there? They looked towards the eleven o'clock position and discovered to their astonishment that there was another Lord Grimm. Dumb! Seven Fields suddenly understood. Level 10 Ninja Skill, Shadow Clone Technique. The King's Avatar Chapter 15, Spider Cave 4 Chapter 15 Spider Cave 4 Shadow Clone Technique was a type of deception skill. Only towards experienced opponents, it was easy to see through the trick. As a result, the trick really only worked on NPCs. When players dueled, the Shadow Clone Technique was most commonly used by the ninja as an instant movement skill. Now Lord Grimm used it like this. The fake body was kept in the original position, while his real body used the Shadow Clone Technique to instantly move to what was originally Sleeping Moon's 4 o'clock position. Everyone was still worried though because level 10 battle mages didn't have any displacement skills yet. How would Lord Grimm knock back the spider boss? They quickly realized that they were worrying too much. Lord Grimm didn't have any skill that could do so, but he had technique. A sky strike knocked up the spider boss a little bit. Using this short time frame, he immediately rushed forward and hit it twice, pushing the spider boss towards Sleeping Moon. Sleeping Moon was already standing on Lord Grimm's original 11 o'clock position. Lord Grimm's fake body still stood next to him. At this moment, Sleeping Moon felt absolutely embarrassed. He even hoped that Lord Grimm would reprimand him a few times. But in the end, Lord Grimm didn't say a thing and just accurately pushed the boss towards him. Sleeping Moon understood what he needed to do. With a lunge, the big spider was once again kicked away. Sleeping Moon mentally prepared for the incoming criticism from everyone, but in the end, he heard everyone amazed. It's bleeding. 
It wasn't a person that was bleeding, it was the spider boss. The bleed status effect couldn't be made through a normal attack. It had to either come from a weapon effect or a skill effect. At the present, no one's weapon had this effect. But there were skills that could cause this effect. Double stab, a battle mage skill. Only, the bleed effect from the stab was a hidden effect. It wasn't triggered through chance. It relied on the player himself to trigger it. The method to activating it was by having both strikes from double stab hit the exact same spot. This didn't mean that both of them hitting an arm was fine. It meant that the second strike had to hit the hole that was stabbed open by the first strike. Only after doing this would there be a chance for the bleed effect to take place. As for the probability of this happening, especially for a hidden effect, the data didn't display it. After players tested it, it was believed to have more or less a 50% probability. This probability could already be considered quite high. Only, it could only be done after completing a specific action. It was easy to perform this action on a dead target, but in non-stop combat, it required precision and reaction speed. Glory had a lot of similar hidden skill effects, which all required difficult actions to activate. If a normal player were to stab out a bleed, Seven Fields and the others would have considered it to be luck. But for Lord Grimm to do so, they all considered it to be skill. With regards to Yeshu's skill, they were already thoroughly convinced. It wasn't just his individual skill, but his command over the team in this boss fight too. He wasn't an ordinary expert, he was an expert among experts. Seven Fields already felt somewhat embarrassed over trying to rope in Yeshu because their full moon guild wasn't even considered a top guild. In the heavenly domain, they were ranked over 50. They held no records in any of the dungeons there. In this sort of common guild, Seven Fields felt that they couldn't accommodate for this player. The others didn't know if they all had the same thoughts as Seven Fields, so everyone just silently attacked. In the process, it was hard to avoid a few minor slips. But Yeshu promptly warned them, so disaster never occurred. Just like this, boss number one was easily killed. After looting the corpse, they found a blue equipment. But because it was low-leveled, no one really cared much about it. I, T would become outdated in an instant anyways. At this moment, however, they all required that Lord Grimm picked it up. Even though Sleeping Moon didn't say anything, he also silently chose to give it up. Yeshu looked and saw that it wasn't much better than a green level 10 belt, but since everyone renounced it, he could only courteously accept it and wear it. They continued forward. Afterwards, they employed the same tactic. Boss number two was a web-spitting long-range type spider. Annoyingly, it would frequently spit out webs onto the cave flying and jumping around like Spider-Man. But under Yeshu's leadership, the five finally brought this fellow into a corner. Only this time they didn't play billiards with it. Instead they used skills that stunned one after another. Yeshu dispatched boss number two through chain stuns so it wouldn't be able to spit out webs again. Naturally, the four players began worshipping Yeshu to a whole new level. This person was their MT as well as their main damage dealer. From time to time, he would even heal them. After doing so, he would plan tactics and then carry it out. The four could no longer use words to describe him and could only worship, worship, and worship him again. The Spider Cave Spider Lord was another difficult part of the dungeon. This guy had the strengths of both small spider bosses, web-spitting, and poisonous. It had eight hairy legs and a belly full of patterns. It was twice as big as a small boss and was extremely nauseating. Confronting this final boss, Seven Fields and the others weren't nervous at all because they knew that under Lord Grimm's commands, there wouldn't be any problems beating this two-in-one boss. As expected, this fight was just as easy as the last ones. This two-in-one Spider Lord was just a bit fatter and had a few extra tricks. Under Yishu's commands, they controlled the field smoothly, dispatched it. First clear. At this moment, the announcement system impressively lined up the names of their five-player party. Sleeping Moon, Seven Fields, Sunset Clouds, Drifting Water, Lord Grimm, Tenth Server, First Spider Cave, Clear. Seven Fields and the others were all astonished and went into an ecstasy. Although their leveling wasn't considered slow, they wouldn't have ever thought that they could be the first ones to clear Spider Cave. This was all thanks to the great expert Lord Grimm.
or it else it wouldn't have gone so smoothly. Dumb! And at this moment, another party of five in the spider cave all shouted together when they saw this announcement. In front of them, there was only a sliver of health left on the spider lord. They would have been able to finish it given ten more seconds. But now, they lost to these ten seconds. Regretful and unwilling, the five players all dreamt of the countless ways they could have made up for those ten seconds. In the end, they could only admit to reality. Their dream was to have their guild be the first to clear every dungeon in the tenth server. But just then, in this second dungeon, their dreams had already been crushed. Ten seconds. They had only lost by ten seconds. Lord Grimm? Wasn't this the person that was the first to kill the Midnight Phantom Cat? The Spider Lord had already collapsed. The five players had smoothly cleared the dungeon, but they weren't happy at all. I think so. Where did this person come from? This person has also been on the announce twice. Blue River, he's just like you. The King's Avatar Chapter 16 Emperor Chapter 16 Emperor 1 This Blue River was also like Lord Grimm and had been announced by the system twice. His background wasn't small. He belonged to one of the three great guilds, Blue Brook Guild. In the Heavenly Domain, he possessed the Blade Master, Blue Bridge Spring Snow, one of the five top experts of Blue Brook Guild. But as all veterans knew, peak guilds like Blue Brook Guild had a professional club backing them. The five great experts weren't their best. The experts of the professional team behind them were. Behind the Blue Brook Guild was the Blue Rain Club's team. The number one player on their team was called Huang Xiaotian. His account was a blade master called Troubling Rain. In the Glory community, he was known as the Sword Saint and was as equally famous as the battle god One Autumn Leaf. When the 10th server opened, Blue Brook Guild sent Blue River along with other helpers to be pioneers in the new server and help establish their power by absorbing fresh blood. No one else but a player from one of those three great guilds would dream of dominating the dungeon records in a new server. Who would have thought that their dreams would have ended already in the spider cave? Not only that, but they were only off by 10 seconds. His brothers were all depressed, and Blue River wasn't feeling good either. Lord Grimm? Discussing the name, Blue River and everyone else were at a loss. The guilds that wrestled for power from Blue Brook Guild mainly did so in the Heavenly Domain. After competing for so many years, they all learned of each other's experts. This time, all of the experts that were sent out to the 10th server had been scouted out, the information was thorough and accurate, but Lord Grimm had never appeared in their list of names. Was it possible that it that he snuck in? Is there any information on his four teammates? Blue River asked. None. All of the brothers said, Get in touch with all of our brothers in each of the villages. See if anyone knows him. Blue River said, Beginners were put into villages randomly. Even their Blue Brook Guild people couldn't meet up with each other easily. Most of them were on their own. While they leveled up, they also dug out future prospects. When they reached level 20 and left Beginner Village, they would join together after establishing a guild. The Blue Brook Guild players that came were headed by Blue River, and his side naturally became the command center. In reality, no big guild would go so far as to cover all of the Beginner Villages. The player distribution was too random so it wasn't possible to be so precise. But when Blue River once again went into Spider Cave to quickly level up, the information they had requested finally arrived. Only, this information not only didn't tell them clearly who those players were, but instead made the situation even more chaotic. The information report told them that outside of the Green Forest at some village, just then Sleeping Moon had slandered and criticized Lord Grimm, saying that he had intentionally tricked and robbed them of the hidden boss. What type of hideous mess is this? Hearing this, everyone was puzzled. This Lord Grimm swindled a player to obtain the first hidden boss kill, and then formed a party with that player to be the first to clear Spider Cave? This odd situation made these five experienced veterans to be extremely puzzled. Let's not worry about this first. Let's hurry up and train. There'll definitely be an opportunity to meet them when we reach level 20. Blue River said gloomily and continued to lead his party. Outside of some villages' spider cave, 
Seven Fields and the others were still immersed in the excitement of being the first ones to clear a dungeon and couldn't free themselves from it. They were lacking compared to Blue River and those experts by several grades. As a result, with regards to a first clear, it was basically a dream come true. Who would have thought that they truly had the chance to complete it? In that moment, they were excited beyond words, and their great leader Lord Grimm, he was still deathly silent. He only dully said a few words. Pretty good experience. Expert, it's all thanks to you. Seven Fields and the others all surrounded Lord Grimm. After playing Glory for so long, today was the day they finally understood what peak expert meant. A peak expert could let novices like them clear a difficult dungeon with ease. Seven Fields felt that for this sort of expert, even leaving his guild to follow him was worth it. In comparison to the other three in high spirits, Sleeping Moon's mood was quite gloomy. What had originally been his hated enemy turned into his brother's hero. Not only that, but just a moment ago in the dungeon, he himself looked like a vile person, giving his brothers a bad opinion of him. Now, if he didn't say anything, then his face really would just fall off. Sleeping Moon grinded his teeth and jumped in front of Lord Grimm. Your skill is really good, I admit to this. Only, I swear that there will be a day I catch up to you. Are you serious? Yishu laughed. Yes, Sleeping Moon said in an extremely provocative manner. Go for it. Yeshu replied back and left. Dumb. Sleeping Moon was about to go insane. You should look down on me. You should hate me. You should mocking me. Wasn't this how experts were supposed to respond to challenges? To not care and just say, go for it, as if nothing had happened. What was that? Little Moon Moon, knock it off. Seven Fields went over to ease him. Fuck, you are the Little Moon Moon. Sleeping Moon said angrily. Calm down, calm down. Let's hurry up and train. The other two brothers, Sunset Clouds and Drifting Water, called out. Then, they gladly and diligently caught up to Lord Grimm to try make him their good friends. Dumb, why didn't they call me over too? Seven Fields immediately rushed over. While Sleeping Moon grinded his teeth, he unexpectedly received a friend request from Lord Grimm. Decline. Sleeping Moon happily declined it. If he asked again, Sleeping Moon thought. But that sort of development didn't happen. Lord Grimm had already entered the dungeon. Seven Fields and the two others followed closely. Sleeping Moon had been swept to the side. Only after a long time did he receive an invite from Seven Fields. Sleeping Moon was depressed. When they entered the dungeon, dumb, the four others didn't wait for him at all. They slaughtered their way through, and as if he weren't there. Sleeping Moon wanted to leave the dungeon, but Seven Fields invited him again. Sleeping Moon still enjoyed his brother's concerns. So he had seconds thoughts, thinking that he couldn't ignore his brother's concern just because of that guy. In the end, he still caught up with them. Seven Fields still had a good relationship with him. He keenly discovered that Sleeping Moon wasn't feeling too good and sent another private message to cheer him up. Sleeping Moon's mood improved a lot. This time, they breezed through the dungeon just like before. In an instant, they slaughtered their way through. Without saying another word, they entered for a third round. But when they entered the dungeon, they received a system prompt. You have mistakenly entered the Spider Emperor's cave. Hidden boss. Seven Fields cried out in alarm and then looked to Lord Grimm. If they didn't have this expert, they definitely wouldn't dare attempt the hidden boss. The system also empathized on this point the hidden boss wouldn't stop players from clearing a dungeon. They could kill it or choose not to. Killing the final boss was still the end goal. Now the players unanimously looked towards Lord Grimm. They wanted to see if this expert had a way to defeat the hidden boss. Oh, there's a hidden boss, Yeshu said. Heh, if it's a hidden boss, we can't kill it? Seven Fields and the others were a little disappointed. It's not that we can't kill it, I just have a few conditions. The Spider Emperor should drop strong spider silk. Can you guys give me this? I'll give up on the other materials and E, equipment. You guys can have them all, Yeshu said. The King's Avatar Chapter 17, Emperor 2. Chapter 17, Emperor 2. No problem. Seven Fields and the others almost didn't think about the proposal before agreeing. At this moment, the value of this expert had already surpassed those precious drops from the hidden boss, 
they were more worried about finding a way to express their goodwill. Who would have thought that this expert would come up with this demand? That was truly a relief. Even if he wanted all of the drops, Seven Fields and the others wouldn't hesitate to agree either. In addition, Seven Fields, this guy, wanted to express his goodwill even further. He turned around and said, Little Moon Moon, give the party leader over to Brother Expert. If you say that again, I'm going to kill you. Sleeping Moon grinded his teeth. Ha ha, isn't it cute? Why don't you like it? Seven Fields laughed, but he didn't joke too excessively and immediately followed up. If you don't want me to call you that, then I won't call you that. Give the party leader position to Brother Expert. Sleeping Moon understood his meaning. By giving him the party leader position and then letting him set up the party, they would thoroughly dispel all of his doubts towards them. He would then have complete trust between them. Reaching this step, Sleeping Moon finally understand at last. Lord Grimm didn't need any plots. If he really wanted everything, then with just a word, his three brothers would have no complaints. Sleeping Moon had no other choice, so he transferred the position to him. In the end, Lord Grimm didn't make any changes and only said, let's continue, so he continued to lead everyone. Their killing method didn't change and everything proceeded without a hitch. Ahead, a fork appeared on the main road of the spider cave. Everyone knew which one of the roads led to the Spider Emperor's den. Lord Grimm didn't hesitate and directly headed towards the Spider Emperor. The four others followed closely behind. This side road wouldn't appear in the normal dungeon. On the way, there were a few spider eggs. When the players moved close to them, they began hatching. Extremely small spiders jumped out and attacked the players. Their damage wasn't high, but they were small and nimble, not easy to hit. The four players opened their eyes wide until they almost popped out. It would basically take three to five strikes to hit it once. But for Lord Grimm, with a just a lift of his lance, he would hit one after another without fail, cleaning them up rapidly. Seeing that the four others were having trouble, he turned around to provide assistance. The four others all held their breath. Without this person, although they could have reached the Spider Emperor, this road would have taken them an hour. Do you think we'll be the first ones to kill the Spider Emperor? Drifting Water looked forward to the future. This depends on our luck. We won't know if we'll meet it early enough. Seven Fields said. We were the first ones to clear it, meaning we were the earliest to go into the Spider Cave the second time. Our speed wasn't slow either. Now this is our third round, and there hasn't been an announcement for it yet. I feel that our chances are good. Drifting Water analyzed. Without strength, even if we met the Spider Emperor, we wouldn't dare to kill it. Sunset Cloud sighed. Luckily, we have Brother Expert, Seven Fields said. Right, right, right. Those two parroted. You guys make me sick. Sleeping Moon exceptionally disdained upon how these three were always trying to curry favor with Lord Grimm. He wasn't scared of Lord Grimm hearing of it either. The three players all felt embarrassed and became somewhat angry towards Sleeping Moon. As for their previous hostility, that fellow was also in the wrong. Why couldn't he just move back a step? Seven Fields once again sent Sleeping Moon a private message to educate him. Sleeping Moon obviously couldn't reason over Seven Fields. In the end, he could only show off a I'm not feeling well anyways attitude. Seven Fields was getting impatient too. W. Hen Sleeping Moon said he wasn't feeling well. Seven Fields told him to just leave the dungeon and get out, and stop causing trouble for them. Sleeping Moon felt sad and wronged. Did the time finally arrive for those peasants to leave him for the expert? We're here. Yeshu continued to be at the very front. Seeing that there was another cave in the Spider Cave, he knew that this was the Spider Emperor's den. How do we kill it? Seven Fields asked. You guys wait a bit, I'm going to go look up a guide, Yeshu said. The four others immediately went into chaos. What was this situation? To look up a guide when they reached a crisis, what was this sort of last-minute preparation? Brother Expert, you, Seven Fields didn't know how to convey it. In the end, he saw that Lord Grimm just stood there without any response. He really did go out of the game to look up a guide. The four were at a loss. They had already judged him as an ultra-high-level expert, but how could this sort of thing happen to such an expert? Could it be, he switched with someone else? 
Seven Fields guessed an idea that caused everyone to be alarmed. As I said before, how could such an awesome expert not stay in the heavenly domain? Why would he be here alone in this new server? Drifting Water said, Fuck, it was a true expert that helped play with us, but now that a fake expert switched in, wouldn't he have to run off and look at a guide? Sunset Cloud said, Brother expert, how could you just abandon us like this? Couldn't you have at least helped us clear the dungeon? Tears streamed down the three players' cheeks. Sleeping Moon hadn't uttered a word, but he suddenly had another guess. This person had acted so calmly and without a reaction towards him. Didn't he have the same personality as the person he had met when they first bumped into each other? Right when he couldn't free himself this type of difficult situation, Yishu had already finished the guide and returned. Okay, Yishu said. Brother expert, you haven't switched players, have you? Seven Fields carefully asked. Switched players? Yishu didn't understand. Has this account been played by you the entire time? Seven Fields asked. Yup, Yishu said. Then I don't really understand. Why would such an amazing expert need to look at a guide? Seven Fields said. I haven't done this dungeon in so many years. If I didn't look at a guide, I wouldn't remember how to beat it. Yishu said. Then before. I had also looked up a guide, Yishu said. The four players were dumbstruck. When? Seven Fields asked. After learning skills, I glimpsed at a few, but they were too long. I hadn't read up to the hidden boss, Yishu said. The four continued to be puzzled. They had all studied a spider cave guide beforehand, but there was no guide that was similar to how Lord Grimm commanded. What guide did he look at? Yishu had already begun explaining how to fight the Spider Emperor. Just a moment ago, I looked at the Spider Emperor's description. To confront him, we can still use the same strategy as we did against the web-spitting one. After surrounding it, we chain-stun it. But here's the difficult part. The Spider Emperor will keep on spawning spider eggs, which can't be interrupted by any skill or effect. The spawn spider will be similar to the ones in the passageway, but their bites will cause a three-second stasis. Everyone knows about the stasis status effect, right? You cannot move or attack, but you can't be hurt either. Although there won't be any damage, it'll break up our formation. So we definitely can't be bitten by those small spiders. Then what should we do? Seven Fields asked. Let me be in charge of clearing these small spiders. Don't worry about them. So the hardest part will be whether the four of you can continuously chain-stun the Spider Emperor until its death. The King's Avatar Chapter 18, Emperor 3 Chapter 18, Emperor 3 This is the strategy from the guide? Seven Fields and the others weren't new players. The guides they had seen didn't have this sort of strategy. If there was such a guide, then it would definitely be criticized until there were cuts and bruises all over. Why? Because this could only be done in theory. Four people continuously chain-stunning the Spider Emperor was still reasonable. But to rely on a single person to cleanly kill off all of the small spiders, who would dare to ensure that he wouldn't make a single mistake? If there was even a single small spider that escaped and bit at any one of the four, then the formation would be interrupted. The Spider Emperor could fly up in the air, drill into the ground, spit webs that pulled them, and spray poison mist. Of all of the hidden bosses, it was the strongest. If the four surrounded it and then suddenly, an opportunity to retaliate appeared, then all of them could just die on the spot. What do you think? Can you guys do it? Yet Yeshu still asked. Hey hey, isn't this a problem that we should be asking you? Can you guarantee that not a single spider will leak out? Sleeping Moon said. Of course, that's why the crucial point is you guys. Four people surrounding it. It's also the highest level Spider Emperor, so coordinating rhythm needs to be fast. I can't help you guys. If you hear my voice and then react, it might already be too slow, so I can only rely on the coordination of you four. What do you think? Is there a problem? Yishu asked. Is there any other method? Seven Fields asked. Truthfully, the four of them weren't very confident. With your combination of class skills, I don't think there is any other, Yishu said. This is a method you decided on after seeing our class's skills? Correct. The four were shocked. They were still wondering what guide Yishu looked at because the several times they had done it, they had never seen a guide like that. Now they knew, 
Yishu didn't look at a guide to look for a strategy, he was only looking at it to see the boss's characteristics. After looking at it, he created a strategy that fit their skills. Without any testing, without any breaking in, just directly commanding, in the end, they cleared the bosses. This time what shocked the four of them wasn't the gorgeous character control, the outstanding awareness, or the exceptional leadership. It was the extremely deep understanding of the game. Seven Fields and the others immediately felt that the word expert wasn't enough to describe him. Only an even grander term could. But the four of them were still hesitant because this time they couldn't completely depend on him. The four had to do their part alone. Originally, they weren't any great experts, merely experienced players that were better than new players. When Yeshu asked whether they could do it or not, they truthfully didn't have much confidence. The four hesitated, but Yeshu didn't urge them. The five of them just silently stood there outside the Spider Emperor's den. But at this moment, a system announcement suddenly flashed over their screens. The first Spider Cave hidden boss kill had already been completed. Seven Fields clenched his teeth and thought, Oh, it'd be best not to think of the first kill at this moment. Even if we went through a dungeon on an ordinary day, if we met a hidden boss, then it's not like we wouldn't even try and just give it up. If we really couldn't do it, then we could just quickly leave. One benefit of beginner village dungeons was that force quitting a dungeon could be done. Although the character still had to be resurrected, there wouldn't be any experience loss. Beginner village all in all took good care of new players. Shall we try it? Seven Fields looked towards his three brothers. The three players showed fighting spirit after seeing the system announcement. They all agreed in unison. Bring it on! Seven Fields represented his brothers and declared their choice to Lord Grimm. Four people is enough to use this strategy. Recall what your rhythm was the last few times. Now just make it a bit faster. Don't think about it. Feel it. Yishu said, Understood. I'll start the battle. Yishu said this and directed Lord Grimm to the den entrance. He didn't enter. He just took out his weapon and lifted it up once. He then suddenly turned around and retreated swiftly. Done? The four were stunned. Done, Yishu said. The four were all scratching their head in puzzlement. How did he start it? They didn't see anything. They all thought that Lord Grimm would enter. Who knew that he would just stand at the entrance for a bit? This type of initiation could only be done by long-ranged classes. Did he bring a gun? He must have. While they guessed, a shriek rang out from the den. The spider emperor that had been in a nice nap had been forcefully woken up. Everyone felt the entire cave shake and knew that the emperor was about to come out. Disperse to the left and right. Be careful. Yishu yelled. Seven fields and the others separated left and right, two on each side. The Spider Emperor spat out poison and directly pounced onto Lord Grimm. Lord Grimm didn't retreat and instead moved forward. He rushed forward to meet it. Right when it looked as if he were going to be pounced on, suddenly his body lowered. With a whoosh and a bang, he slid across the Spider Emperor's belly. I told you he brought a gun! Drifting water shouted. The bang was a sound produced from a basic gunner attack. The sliding Lord Grimm then leaped up into the air. With a flick of his wrist, the lance stabbed into the Spider Emperor's butt. Using the Spider Emperor's pouncing power, he sent the Spider Emperor flying into the four-man formation. Up! Yeshu yelled. The four acted with confusion. Prior to this, they had thought that Yeshu needed a bit of time to bring the monster into the trap. They hadn't thought that the Spider Emperor would have been brought to them so directly and efficiently. I'll start! Seven Fields shouted and moved up to attack. Then me! Sunset clouds moved up. Drifting water went next. Sleeping Moon had to go next. After Sleeping Moon finished, Seven Fields cried, My skill's still on cooldown. Too quick. Yeshu's Lord Grimm had already dashed up to use a dragon tooth keeping the Spider Emperor stunned. Hurry up and get familiar with the rhythm. Yeshu directed Lord Grimm to the just recently spawned small spiders. Okay. Seven Fields looked. It turns out that the Emperor didn't immediately lay out all of its abilities when the fight began. It started out quite slow, giving them some time to ease in. At this point, the Great Expert could still deal with a small amount of spiders while simultaneously helping them continuously stun. It's still too fast. 
After the round was over, Sevenfield's skill was still on cooldown. Don't be nervous. Grasp the rhythm, Yeshu reminded. Fast. Drifting water went too early. Still fast. It's still drifting water. It's still fast. This time it's little moon moon. Drifting water's rhythm was good. You've adjusted well. Yeshu helped observe who was doing well while busily hitting down the small spiders. The spider emperor's life continued to drop. The spawn rate increased by one, two, three. Okay, this round's rhythm was good that time. Grasp it well. Finally, this round, their coordination was just right. The King's Avatar Chapter 19, Emperor 4 Chapter 19, Emperor 4 Rhythm, Rhythm Seven Fields and the others recited the word until their minds were about to break. In front of their eyes wasn't the Spider Emperor, nor an attack target, only when to use their skill. After another successful round after another, the four players felt happy. Had they finally grasped it? Although they couldn't say what the feeling was, but it felt like it was right, and began instinctively releasing their skills at the right time. Yeshu, at this time, also didn't have the skill to take care of them anymore. After saying a, go, 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 he coiled around the spider emperor, taking down the small spiders. Hitting left and right without ever failing, the small spiders were killed. Currently, only Yeshu could do this. Although there were other players that had this level of skill, in the new server, their weapons were still only level 10. They couldn't kill the small spiders in one hit. If a small spider had to be hit twice to kill, even Yeshu wouldn't be able to completely clear them all. Be careful and concentrate. You guys can do it. Yeshu reminded them from time to time. He clearly knew that it was easy to grow numb from doing this sort of repeated robotic action. If their minds wandered for a bit, then a tragedy would appear. Seven Fields didn't let their minds go astray. They fixed their attention on their brother's actions. They didn't have to time to worry about what Lord Grimm was doing, even though they clearly knew that clearing the small spiders was much more difficult. In addition, a single mistake would cause them to all die too. The Spider Emperor's life had already dropped to half. Seven Fields repeatedly did the same action, and the rhythm was fast too. He felt that his fingers had turned a little rigid. They all began to doubt whether they could still continue to press on. Seven Fields boldly gave some attention to Lord Grimm's situation. Lord Grimm was currently flying around everywhere. The Spider Emperor had already begun to lay six eggs at once. Six spider eggs after breaking open their shell, without any reason, would randomly choose a target to pounce on. Lord Grimm's battle lance was jet black. Only the tip of the umbrella had a small glint of light. With a wave and a flash of cold light, the battle lance stabbed through the small spider, which shrieked and died on the spot. Not good. Sevenfield's heart dropped. He saw, from the corner of his eye, a small spider had quickly flew towards sunset clouds. But Lord Grimm's distance was too far, it didn't look like he would make it in time. In the end, he only heard a bang echo, and that small spider burst into flames, exploding into small pieces. What happened? Seven Fields said in a flurry. It was good that he still hadn't forgotten his task. He attacks were still on point. It seems as if it had been hit by a gun. Seven Fields thought. But at that time, he had only seen the small spider, he hadn't paid attention to Lord Grimm's movements. Thinking about that long-ranged initiation, he confirmed that this player also brought a different class's weapon with him. Seven Fields now felt reassured. But when he looked at his brothers, he saw that they were all concentrated solely on their task at hand. Their heads hadn't even turned once. Seven Fields suddenly discovered that during this moment of distraction, his wariness and nervousness decreased by quite a bit. But at this moment, Seven Fields didn't dare tell his brothers about this experience. If everyone became distracted for a bit, who knew what would happen? I hope that there won't be any accidents. Seven Fields silently thought in his heart. But at this moment, Sleeping Moon felt as if his limit had almost been reached. Both hands were extremely stiff, and it seemed like they had lost all flexibility. He couldn't even tell whether he had completed his action when each round passed. His gaze was fixed on the screen. When suddenly, he felt as if the distance between the screen and him widened, Ed, and everything on the screen blurred. Feeling, I have to remember the feeling. 
Sleeping Moon kept reminding himself. He was under a lot of pressure and was afraid of making a mistake. He knew that his brothers already had a somewhat bad opinion of him. Even more, he didn't want Lord Grimm to look down on him. Stand firm. Sleeping Moon clenched his teeth and persevered. In the very beginning, the Spider Emperor's health seemed to drop so quickly. But why does it feel so slow now? After all this time, why is there still theft left? Can I really persevere until the end? When Seven Fields became distracted, it let him relax a bit. But when Sleeping Moon became distracted, it only added to his pressure. In the end, it didn't matter what happened though, the two players hadn't made any mistakes yet. Their chain-stunning coordination still continued. Just at this moment, Drifting Water suddenly let out a cry. He made a mistake. When they had first started to break in, he was also the slowest to enter the state, unable to grasp the rhythm. After persevering for this long, he had finally made a slip-up. Just like before, he had acted too quickly. Although the Spider Emperor was still stun-locked, after Sleeping Moon went, what then? Because Drifting Water had acted too quickly, Sevenfield's skill would still be on cooldown. He had no other skill to stun the Spider Emperor again. The four players' hearts all dropped to a sheet of dead ash. They all hoped that the expert would perform a miracle and rescue them. But in the end, they saw that the Spider Emperor raised its butt and unfortunately spawned eight eggs at this moment. It's over, the four gave up all hope. After Sleeping Moon used his skill, he could only sorrowfully look at Seven Fields. Seven Fields had no available skills, he had no idea what to do next. After losing control of the Spider Emperor, what should he do? This was an event that he hadn't foreseen. Seven Fields, move out of the way. In the middle of their despair, a voice ignited their hopes in an instant. Seven Fields immediately moved to the side without the slightest hesitation. A battle lance streaked from the sky. Lord Grimm used Dragon Tooth to stab the Spider Emperor. The stun status had been mended, but with no one controlling the eight small spiders, they all scattered ready to bite everyone. Everyone was at a loss. They didn't know whether to continue attacking the Spider Emperor or deal with the small spiders. In the end, they saw that Lord Grimm, who had just used Dragon Tooth, moved forward two steps. The battle lance in his hand unexpectedly split into two parts. With each hand holding a different part, both arms stretched forward and held back the Spider Emperor. Humph! Lord Grimm lifted both his arms. Taking advantage of the Spider Emperor raising his head, he flipped backwards. With an iron bridge, he toppled the Spider Emperor onto its back. Grappler skill, back throw. This skill not only did damage to the target, but also created a small-scale ripple, damaging monsters in its radius. Lord Grimm's back throw had created a ripple at just the right spot, hitting all eight spiders. The small spiders all flipped over and bounced up. With a crashing sound, they all turned into corpses. Seven fields, Yeshu yelled. Seven fields had been prepared. He immediately kicked it, and the Spider Emperor continued to be in a stunned state. Everyone be careful. I can't rescue you guys all the time, Yeshu said. The King's Avatar Chapter 20, Emperor. Chapter 20, Emperor 5. Sunset clouds, drifting water, sleeping moon, each one attacked it one after the other. They were all scared to the point that their hands were drenched with cold sweat. Every time they grabbed their mouse, they were afraid that their hands would slip. But there was no time to wipe it. They were all wide-eyed, not daring to make the slightest mistake. The situation stabilized once more. The four players that didn't dare be distracted didn't reflect on the past situation. Under their relentless attacks, the Spider Emperor's health declined. From third to quarter to quai. It's almost at red blood. Everyone be careful, Yishu reminded them. What do we do when it hits red blood? Seven Fields asked. When a hidden boss hit red blood, there would definitely be a special effect. The guide he looked at said that when the boss hit red blood, it would gain super armor. In this state, the boss couldn't be stunned. Kill it quick, Yishu said. Hearing these three words, the four players no longer felt nervous, but on the contrary felt excited. They had performed the same action for too long. They would rather die than do the same actions again. It's red, Seven Fields yelled. Sunset clouds step on a small spider. Yeshu shouted. What? Although Sunset Clouds didn't understand this command, he had already subconsciously faced towards a small spider that pounced at him. 
it looked like it really had been prepared just for him. The small spider bit toward sunset clouds, and immediately he was incapable of performing any actions. The spider emperor unexpectedly also twisted its body and bit disgustingly with its big mouth towards him. Sunset clouds cried out in fear. In the end, in the end, nothing happened. After the small spider bit him, he was forced into a stasis state and couldn't move. But during this time, he was invincible. Even the spider emperor couldn't harm him. Yeshu used this knowledge to give everyone time to freely attack the spider emperor for three seconds. While the spider emperor acted out violently, it continued to spawn eggs like mad. Yeshu took note of this and began clearing out all of the small spiders again. Only this time, he carefully observed that the small spiders didn't touch sunset clouds. But it could be said that sunset clouds suddenly gained insight and actively looked for small spiders to bite him. Although they weren't experts, they were experienced and understood Yeshu's tactic. Because the four players had surrounded and attacked the Spider Emperor, they had accumulated a lot of aggro. Sunset Clouds did the greatest amount of damage among the four of them, so the aggro onto him was also the greatest. Yi Shu used this knowledge and let the Spider Emperor to start off his plan. The original small spiders that had once tried to interrupt their formation became their most dependable protective umbrella. Before, this tactic wouldn't have worked because it was only until later did sunset clouds accumulate enough aggro onto him. Besides, it was also at this point that the spider emperor's spawning rate pushed him to his limits. Sunset clouds lined up to be bitten maintaining his invincibility. Although the small spiders did some damage, it wasn't very high. When there was an opportunity, Lord Grimm would conveniently give him a heal. The Spider Emperor spat out webs and poison. Every part of its body that could be used was used, but to no avail. Only with their continuous attacks, finally someone surpassed Sunset Clouds in total aggro. The Spider Emperor switched attack targets, but the first one to be targeted, Sleeping Moon, had learned of Sunset Clouds' tactic long ago and the one with the task of clearing small spiders, Lord Grimm, had predicted this step too. He prepared a spider in advance to pounce towards Sleeping Moon. This most dangerous red blood part of the battle had already been thoroughly turned into a game. Everyone was happily laughing and bullying the Spider Emperor. Finally, they teased this strongest monster in Spider Cave to its death. First, the system announcement appeared. Lord Grimm, Seven Fields, Sunset Clouds, Drifting Water, Sleeping Moon are the first to kill the Spider Emperor. Sweet! Seven Fields and the others excitedly cheered. If they could, they would have lifted Lord Grimm high up towards the sky and tossed him. If they didn't have him, they wouldn't have been able to complete it. The continuous chain stuns on the Spider Emperor gave them lots of pressure, but the task of clearing out the small spiders was much harder. The scarier part was that he had rescued them midway. Finally, he accurately controlled the small spider's aggro in order to complete the entire plan. They had nothing more to say. Seven Fields and the others truly had no other words to describe it. They had played glory, but up until now, let alone seeing, they hadn't even thought such an amazing player existed. Brother Expert Four Strong Silk Threads Dropped Seven Fields ran up to see what the Spider Emperor had dropped and reported it to Yeshu. He happily chose to give them up. The others also, without any objections, agreed that they wouldn't even touch them. Thank you. Yeshu said and picked up the four strong silk threads. The rest is yours. Yeshu also kept his word. You take them. You take them. After the items appeared, they humbly declined them. They knew that Yeshu made sure a disaster never appeared. Besides the strong spider silk, the spider emperor also dropped two spider venoms, a pair of level 15 chestnut boots, an armor that added three points to strength. Apart from this, a purple weapon appeared too. Mahogany Tachi, level 15 weight, 2.6 kilograms, attack speed 8 physical attack, 165, magic attack, 178, strength plus 10, intelligence plus 14 Tachis were considered sword class weapons used by the swordsman type class, but its magic attack was high. Actually, in glory, weapons either emphasized either physical attack or magic attack. The Thousand Chance Umbrella was the same in both. A player could know that it was self-made just by looking at its stats. In comparison, 
the mahogany tachi was on the same level as the thousand chance umbrella. A level 15 purple weapon was equivalent to his level 5 silver weapon. But this mahogany tachi did have additional properties. Its attack speed was higher than the Thousand Chance Umbrella by three levels, and just by its attribute increases, it already surpassed the Thousand Chance Umbrella. Yeshu looked at the Tachi and sighed in admiration at today's luck. Blue equipment and hidden boss materials were certain drops, but the previous skillbook and the current purple weapon, those were all luck. Although low-leveled equipment would quickly become outdated, with this purple weapon, in the first stage, a player would still be stronger than most others. Not only that, but purple weapons could totally be used up until level 25. Because of this sword, even if an unspecialized character that hadn't planned on playing the swordsman type class switched to it, the switch would be worth it. The four players all gulped, especially Sleeping Moon and Sunset Clouds. Those two had been planning on playing a swordsman type class. This weapon absolutely suited them. Ha ha! This sword is useless. You guys take it. After Yeshu looked at it for a bit, he decided to renounce it. He also renounced the spider venom and chestnut boots and completely kept his word on their previous agreement. Brother expert, you should still take them, Seven Fields said honestly. If you didn't carry us, we wouldn't have been able to see these things. Haha, <laughs> if it weren't for your formation, even I would have trouble killing the spider emperor, Yeshu said. Everyone stared blankly. Did they hear that correctly? He didn't say he wasn't able to, he only said he'd have trouble. 